You know I mean you well. I stood beside your dark and fiery youth, watching its bold and bad career, as men watch meteors, but it vanished not. I mocked your desperate and remorseless manhood. Now do I behold you in dishonored age, charged with a thousand unrepented crimes. Yet I have ever hoped that you would amend, and in that hope have saved your life three times. For which Aldo Brandino owes you now my feet beyond the pension. Cardinal, one thing I pray Recollect henceforth, and so we shall converse with less restraint. A man you knew spoke of my wife and daughter. He was accustomed to frequent my house. So the next day his wife and daughter came and asked if I had seen him. And I smiled. I think they never saw him. Any more, thou execrable man, beware <laughs> of thee. Nay, this is I. We should know each other. As to my character for what men call crime, seeing I please my senses as I list, and vindicate the right with force or guile, it is a public matter, and I care not if I discuss it with you. I may speak alike to you with my own conscious heart. For you give out that you have half reformed me. Therefore, strong vanity will keep you silent. If fear should not, both will. I do not doubt. All men delight in sensual luxury. All men enjoy revenge. But most exalt over the torches they will never feel, flattering their secret peace with others' pain. But I delight in nothing else. I love the sight of agony and the sense of joy. When this shall be another's and that's mine. And I have no remorse or little fear which are, I think, the checks of other men. This mood has grown upon me. Until now, any design my fancy captious makes, a picture of its wish, and it forms none. But such as men like you would start to know is as my natural food and rest a bard until it be accomplished. Art thou not most miserable? <laughs> <clears throat> Why miserable? No. I am what your theologians call hardened, which they must be an impudent so to revile a man's peculiar taste. True, I was happier than I am, while yet man had remained to act the thing I thought, while lust was sweeter than revenge. And now invention palls. I we must all grow old. And but there yet remains a deed to act whose whore might make sharp an appetite duller than mine. I do. I know not what. When I was young, I thought of nothing else but pleasure. And I fed on honey sweets. Men by St. Thomas cannot live like bees, and I grew tired. Yet. Kill the foe, and heard his groans, and heard his children's groans, knew not what delight was else on earth, which now delights me little. I the rather look on such pangs as tear real conceals, dry fixed eyeball, the pale quivering lip which tell me the spirit weeps within tears bitter than the bloody sweat of Christ. Rarely kill the body which preserves like a strong prison. The soul within my power, wherein I feed it with the breath of fear for hourly pain. Hell's most abandoned fiend did never in the drugness of guilt speak to his heart as now you speak to me. I thank my God that I believe you not. My lord, a 
gentleman from Salamanca would speak with you. Bid him attend me, grand salute. Farewell. And I pray, almighty God, that thy false and pious words tempt not his spirit to abandon thee. <laughs> 